Hi, everyone. Welcome to our session, Chinese EFL Teachers' Perceptions of Professional Development Options. My name is Lin Mingzhe. I'm a graduate student majoring MA TESOL program at the Sino US University in China. And we also today have my colleague Wang Xing. Today, we will talk about our topic through the following parts. I will talk about the background information, literature review, methodology, and one part of the results. My colleague is going to mainly talk about the results, discussion, and implication. First, what I want to share is our research background. As I said before, we are studying at MA TESOL program where the university just started two years ago. We really intrigued by the reason why these pre and in-service teachers still choose to pursue their master's degree while they are receiving teacher training provided by the school and the government. Followed by the question, we did the research and found that there are a lot of research focusing on the effectiveness of current teacher development opportunities and the new ways of training. However, there's a research gap in teachers' perceptions of the training opportunities. Next, I would like to introduce our literature review. First, current professional development options for EFL teachers in China. Here is an important definition. What is that teacher professional development? It is defined as the continuous acquisition of new knowledge and abilities. Also, it is the process of developing teachers' profession and identity. At the same time, it is the activity of enhancing teachers' personal abilities. In China, we have several training options for teacher professional development. In the provincial level, we have teaching workshops, educational conferences, educational seminars, academic reports and counseling lectures and lesson competitions. In the school level, we have teaching research groups. Within these groups, the teachers will be arranged to attend mentoring and lesson critique, grade level collective lesson preparation groups, individual collaborative research projects, lesson competitions again, collaborative inquiries between the new teachers and experienced teachers. Although there are so many options, there still might be different feelings from different teachers. Some teachers tend to believe that classroom evaluation and observation could help new teachers develop their professions, their professional knowledge. However, some teachers may believe that the training is short, fragmented, and not coherent with the previous sessions. Another study showed that some teachers are feel like isolated because the content is not relevant with the reality, the actual teaching situation. In another study, it shows that some teachers are disappointed in collaboration with their colleagues and their needs for more better training chances. Next, we found some teachers' motivations for pursuing an advanced degree. In this study, these motivations are classified into four aspects. The first one is career development. The next one is about the professional growth and external influences, maybe from their families or the friends, and the competitive advantages. The above or information is all about our literature review. Now we are going to demonstrate our methodology. Our research questions are, what are Chinese EFL teachers' attitudes and perceptions of current teacher professional development options? The second question is, 
what are the motivation and rationale for the decision to pursue an advanced degree? The last question, what are the reasons for choosing the current program? In this study, we have 22 participants from MA TESOL program at the Sino-US University. The research adopted a mixed research methods, which means we used a survey to investigate their basic information, general perceptions of current teacher professional development and reasons for applying for the current program. Other than that, we also applied interviews with five participants, which contains three pre-service teachers and two in-service teachers. Well, after doing a survey, we collected their basic information. Their ages vary from 20 to 40. Their teaching experience mainly placed between less than one year to three years. We have primary, junior high and senior high teachers. In the questionnaire, we have two questions with Likert scale with one point to five points. One point means not willing or not satisfied at all. Five means really willing or really satisfied. The results show that the participants have a preference for studying overseas and summer university training courses and attending teaching workshop held by province bureau of education and last one having classroom observation and next Wang Xing my colleague is going to share the interview data to explore the detailed reasons Thank you, Lin. I will take it from here to present our findings through analyzing both from quantitative and qualitative data and conclusion together with implications for further study. Let's start from reading books and writing reflective journals. The attitudes from both pre-service and in-service teachers are negative. They give comments like uncomfortable, a waste of time, and some teachers just copy something from the internet, you know, to finish the task. About the required 90 hour online training, both show negative feelings. pre survey teachers are worried that the quality of the teacher, and according to the in-service teachers, the quality is actually uneven. Next one is open demo classes. Pre-service teachers show positive attitudes because they hold the idea that they can learn from each other through watching over other teachers doing it and reflect on their own lessons. While in-service teachers show negative attitudes, mostly because teachers who observe the open demo classes give critical comments which are not really helpful because teachers have different styles regards to teaching. And about teaching research group, pre-service teachers regard it as a kind of formalism. While one in-service well, in teacher states that it can help new teachers develop and unify thinking among teachers. About classroom observation, there are mixed attitudes among in-service teachers. One part thinks that classroom observation is very useful, and another part thinks that they don't have time to prepare fancy PPTs like that, which means it is not connected to the reality. That's the part about teachers' attitudes toward current options. Now let's move to their motivation and rationale for an advanced degree. According to the results of our study, the top three reasons are personal development to increase promotion opportunities and learn the essential skills of the 21st century to increase competitive advantages. Our participants say that 
a master's degree can provide them competitive advantages in job market, and they can also benefit from other subsidy policies with better welfare. E-service teachers also mentioned that it's a plus to get promotion or pursue a better working environment. Another motivation is new environment. They mentioned things like different environment, different ideas, and work with people that share similar thinking. Another rationale is external influences, one from family. They mentioned things like their family wants them to stay, stay inside China and expectations to pursue higher degree for their future. Another one is the current situation of pandemic, which created big obstacles for them to study abroad and the competitive environment of China. One pre-service teacher mentioned that the overall environment in China promotes that you need to pursue further study after graduating from college. Now it comes to the, their motivation and rationale for choosing the Sino-US joint MATSO program. As the table shows, top three is the As the table shows, top three is the following. First, they don't need to take part in the National Unified Entrance Exam for postgraduate students. Second, the location of the university is close to their home. And third, they can get an American degree. Here are some quotes from our participants. They mentioned, they mentioned that this university provides scholarships University, this university shows little discrimination against applicants undergraduate degree, and it adopts English as the medium instructional language and its popularity in Wenzhou. This leads us to the needs of teachers, of teachers concerning their professional development. Teaching methods, classroom management skills, and research ability are the top three areas that they want to improve. And the green part of in our pie chart means that they have needs to improve all areas. So next part is the interview data from the needs of EFL teachers professional development. The first one is about their professional growth. They want to improve the, their classroom management skills because as you know, there are always big classes in China. And they want to learn new concepts about teaching, such as teaching methods and principles. And also they want to learn how to write a research paper. They are required to write research papers and they, they want to do that, but they don't know how to do the procedure. And they also want to learn some psycho psychological knowledge so they can better understanding their students' behavior. Next one, the second one is they want more learning opportunities with, with subsidies. So our participants mentioned Delta training courses, TESOL conferences, a master's degree, out of school, classroom observation from excellent teachers and teaching competitions. The third one is about their personal, personal growth. So they want to improve their English language skills. One participant mentioned that they want to learn how to analyze and explain complex sentences in English. And they want to they want to have reading and sharing sessions. The last one is the teachers want less administrative, administrative routines, which means they want the school and the government to reduce their workload for unnecessary meetings, filling the forms and workshops that doesn't have anything to do with their teaching. So they can have more energy and time to focus on their teaching. 
After going through the results of our study, we see both negative and positive attitudes towards various professional development skills. However, they expect that these opportunities can provide more communication opportunities for teachers, like reading a book together and sharing their ideas and workshops. The point is that is these, um, these opportunities are practical and can help them with their professional growth and teaching. Because teachers, they have different preference towards teaching style, principles, as well as methods. So they hope that they can have their own choice towards these opportunities instead of being required to finish these tasks. So as we said in the beginning of our study, there's a few study in investigating teachers' attitudes towards their, their own current professional development opportunities. So we've, we've only done a small scale of study with limited number of participants, but we hope that our study can be beneficial for your future study. Last thing we want to mention is that with the application of double reduction in China, which seems to add more workload on teachers, its influence on teacher professional development also deserves to be noticed and studied. So that's the end of our presentation. And here is our reference list. Thank you so much for listening.